Hi everyone, this is Hans from Tundra Feed and Supply Company. Today we're going to be looking at how to create uh, projectiles in Godot 4. So currently we have a 2D scene here where we've got a player, which is a character body 2D, along with a sprite and a collision shape, and then an enemy, which is a static body 2D, also with a sprite and a collision shape. Um, at this stage, there's a very simple logic here that just allows the player to move around with the WASD keys, and then they point at the mouse. And other than that, nothing happens. Okay, so let's get into creating a projectile. So go ahead and left click on the node 2D, and then right click to add a child node, and then from here, we're gonna type area 2D. Our projectile should be as simple as possible, so we're just interested in creating an area 2D here. So let's go ahead and click create. Okay, let's rename this to projectile. Great. So let's go ahead and add a collision shape 2D. And let's also add a sprite 2D. That way we can actually see what our projectile looks like. Okay, so for our sprite, let's go ahead and just drag the icon SVG up into it. And there we are. All right, and then let's go ahead and scale this down so it's not the same size as our player and enemy. So let's go ahead and left click on projectile and then under transform in the inspector, go ahead and set the scale to something like 0.5. Okay, there we go. And now we've shrunk this down. So now let's left click on our collision shape 2D and then over in the inspector under shape, let's go ahead and assign it a shape. We're gonna go ahead and go with a rectangle shape to match what our object looks like. And you can go ahead and draw that out to be the same size as our shape. In this instance, right, it looks a bit funny because the sprite is actually drawing on top of the collision shape, but we can go ahead and move that around and you can see our collision shape there again. I'm not being super precise with it, but that's okay for now. So let's go ahead and save that. And now let's go ahead and add a script for our projectile. All of these defaults are okay, so you can go ahead and just hit, uh, go ahead and click create. Now we don't need any of these uh, we don't need anything in the ready function and we don't need this comment here either and i'm going to expand this out so we can see our code better great okay let's get rid of that now in here our projectile is very simple so let's go ahead and look at its position and inside the process function and we're just going to say plus equal transform dot x transform dot x so that's our left right direction on the screen so transform dot x and it's going to be times speed times delta. Okay, now let's go ahead and also declare our variable speed. So const speed equals, and we'll give it a large number like a thousand so that it moves quickly. Okay, so now our, our left right direction is gonna be multiplied by our speed and then we're multiplying that by delta. Delta is the time in between frames. So this allows our projectile to move at a consistent rate despite potentially a, um, a changing frame rate. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Great, and this is our projectile. So looking back into our scene now, Let's go ahead and go to our player and we're going to modify the script for them. So let's jump back to our script and look at our player. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go to our project and then project settings and over to our input map and we're gonna to wanna to add a new action for attack. So go ahead and type attack and hit enter to add the action and then go ahead and click this plus and while it's listening for inputs, left click or you can hit whatever key you'd like to use to trigger this attack and we're gonna hit Okay. Okay, so now we can go ahead and close out of our input map and looking into our player script in the physics process, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if input dot is action just pressed and we're gonna put our attack action in there. So now, right, anytime the attack action is pressed, this if statement is going to trigger. So what we can do from here now is actually instantiate our projectile. So let's go ahead and expand this so we can see the code. And under our player speed here, let's go ahead and declare a new variable at export bar projectile. And this is gonna be of typed packed scene. That's what Godot calls other saved, uh, other saved scenes. So packed scene. 
Now in our if statement, let's go ahead and say var new projectile, and this is equal to projectile dot instantiate, and we're gonna say as node 2D. Now the reason why even, so right, so this is a area 2D, but area 2D inherits from node 2D, which is why we can tell GDScript that this uh, object is a node 2D. And we want to get access to node 2D because we want those properties that node 2D has, uh, namely the transform properties, and we're going to be setting the position and the rotation of this object. So we've gone ahead and created a new object, but it's not in our scene yet. So what we need to do is get our tree, then current scene, and then from here, add child, and we're going to add our new projectile. Okay, but now our new projectile would just be somewhere in this scene. So what we want to do from here is we're going to say that the new projectile dot global position is equal to global position, right? So when we just say global position here, we're referring to this object's global position, which is the player. And we do want this to spawn at the player. Okay, and then what we also want to do is set the rotation to be the player's rotation. So we can also just again type rotation to be the player's rotation. And there we go. We've now set our, we've now gone ahead and every time we press our attack button, uh, we're going to spawn a projectile moving uh, that's pointed in the direction that we're pointed and spawning at our location. So if we go ahead and play our scene and we move and we left click, we get an issue because instantiate is null. And the reason why this is null is because, right, projectile is an exported variable of a pack scene, which we've not assigned yet. So let's minimize that. Let's click on our player. And in the inspector under projectile, let's go ahead and drag our projectile scene over there. Now, in order to do that, let's left click on our projectile object and right click on it, save branch as scene. And this, we're just gonna call it projectile. Great. So now we have a projectile scene. So if we click on our player, we can now drag and drop our projectile over. Okay, fantastic. And let's go ahead and remove the existing projectile from the scene. So let's go ahead and just click delete node. There we go. All right, so if we run our scene again, and we left click, we can see projectiles are being created and firing from our player. However, we would also like them to destroy, uh, en destroy our enemy here and destroy themselves when they hit it. So let's go ahead and X out of this. And over at our enemy, what we're going to do is we're going to add a child node, and this is going to be also of area 2D. We're going to rename this to hitbox. Hitbox. Okay, and the hitbox also needs a collision shape. So let's go ahead and add a collision shape to it. There we are. Okay, so let's go look at our scene here. Let's zoom on out, and let's go over here. Let's go ahead and hide the collision shape right now. And then for here, for the hitbox's collision shape, let's add a new rectangle shape so that we can see here, and we'll drag this out. Okay, great. And let's go ahead and we can make this visible again as well. So there we are. So here's our enemy hitbox now. Now something else that we wanna do is under our collision, rather than the hitbox being on layer and mask one, we want it to be on uh, layer and mask two. Right, so this is the layer that our projectile is going to be on. So while we're doing that, let's go ahead and look at our projectile. Let's go ahead and open up our projectile scene and click on our projectile and go to collision and switch the layer and mask to two. Now, the reason we want to do this is because we don't want our projectiles to interact with our player, which is on layer and mask one. So now that the projectile is on layer and mask two, let's go ahead and save that and let's go back over to our other scene and save this scene as well. Okay, great. So now we're also going to attach a script to our hitbox and we'll leave it as hitbox. Okay, so we don't need our ready function and we don't need our, and, and we're not going to need our process function either. Now, if you want, you can leave the ready function there and programmatically hook up your uh, signals or you can do it through uh, the through the node uh, tab next to inspector. Let's go ahead and give this a try programmatically. So we'll say func 
ready. Okay, and now from here, what we want to do is we're gonna connect up our signals. So let's take a look. This signal on our, let's click hitbox here, it's called area entered. So let's say, let's call area entered dot connect and then let's pass in the name of our function. So it's gonna be on area entered. Great, so let's get rid of our process function and we're gonna define our new function, which is gonna be on area entered. And we can see as well that it takes in an area. Okay, great. So from here, we can do a couple things. So we know, since this is on our hitbox, that the area that's entering the hitbox is going to be the projectile. So we can say area dot Q free. And this will go ahead and delete the projectile. However, we also need to remove our enemy. So we could just say Q free, but that will actually just delete the hitbox when what we really need to do is delete the enemy. So what we want to call is get parent dot Q free. Okay, and if we save this and run our scene again, when a projectile hits our enemy, the enemy and the projectile disappear. Okay, and there we go. And that is how you set up a projectile in Godot 4. Thank you so much for watching.